Hi guys, I'm Charlie, a Charlie Book Fanatic. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to do my diversity bingo wrap up. I participated in diversity bingo last year. I didn't do all of the squares on the bingo cards, but I definitely did some squares. And in today's wrap up, I want to talk to you about the squares I did manage to fulfill and what books I read for those squares. First square is SFF with a disabled main character. I chose a fantasy book with a disabled main character, but this character got disabled later on in the story, and that book is Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas. It's the fourth book in the Throne of Glass series. If you've been watching this channel for a while, I'll just tell you, the Throne of Glass series isn't one of my favourite series. I really liked the first book in the series, Throne of Glass, but after that the series got slowly worse and worse for me. I still read it because I am a loyal reader and I do wonder about how Sarah J Maas is going to wrap up this series eventually. I haven't read Tower of Dawn yet, but that's the only book in the series I haven't read yet. But Queen of Shadows really wasn't my cup of tea, but it does have a disabled main character, which I do commend it for. And in Tower of Dawn, the sixth book in the series, the book entirely follows this disabled main character. So I think that is very interesting and I cannot wait to see how Sarah J Maas handles this. And a lot of people are actually very positive about Tower of Dawn, even though they haven't been as positive about the previous books in the series, Tower of Dawn seems to get a lot of positive reviews so I am definitely checking it out and I hope I will like it as much as pe other people seem to like it. The next square I did was Practicing Jewish Main Character and I chose Blood for Blood by Ryan Graden. This is the second book in the Wolf by Wolf duology. Wolf by Wolf follows an intercontinental motorcycle race. It follows this main character Yael who is a skin shifter. She changes into this girl to participate in this motorcycle race because the prize is to meet Hitler and her goal is to kill Hitler because this is an alternate retelling of World War II where Hitler has won the war. This is a very interesting duology that I absolutely loved. It's one of my favourite series of all time. And Blood for Blood, the main character, Yael, is actually Jewish. And that is what makes the story so interesting, actually, because she changes into this girl that is not Jewish to participate in this motorcycle race so she can meet Hitler. And she is practicing, not really throughout the book, but at the end of Blood for Blood, you can see how she gets more in touch with her religion. And I thought this was super interesting how religion eventually did play a part in it. Being Jewish played a huge part in World War II, obviously. So I'm glad Ryan Grodin did make that element a, a bigger part at the end of Blood for Blood. The next challenge I did was Displaced Main Character, and I chose the book A List of Cages by Robin Rowe. This is a a book with all the trigger warnings for child abuse. This book was very dramatic, I will tell you that. I'm not a huge fan of it, a lot of people seem to love it, so I would still urge you to check it out because it is a very important book. I will not say it isn't, because it is, but I just didn't click with me. I didn't believe any of it, it sounded way too dramatic for me. But there was a lot of child abuse in this, it was one hell of a roller coaster ride, not gonna lie about that. Again, another book that you have to decide for yourself, sounds interesting to you, if you want to check it out, please do. I just didn't really like it, too dramatic, I didn't like the writing style of it, it didn't make me feel anything, even though it was supposed to make me feel something, so yeah, it wasn't my favourite book of the entire year. Then the main character with an underrepresented body, and I chose an e arc I got to read last year, The Art of Starving by Sam J. Miller. The Art of Starving is about an anorexic main character. The writing style, again, wasn't really my cup of tea, which is why I didn't talk about a lot of these books a lot in the past year, because I didn't have a great reading year, so I didn't like a lot of the books I was reading. I thought this book was just average. A lot happened in this book that I did not like and I did not support, but I am checking out Sam J. Miller's newest release that I already have an e arc of, which is Blackfish City, which Sam Sounds hella interesting. The Art of Starving, mm, not really my cup of tea, but it had an anorexic main character, so an underrepresented body. I think it's a very important topic to read about. A neurodiverse MC, I chose Dreamfall, which is the first book in the Dreamfall duology, I believe, by Amy Plum. Dreamfall has a very interesting premise. It follows these children who all suffer from insomnia and they all go through electroconvulsive therapy, but then this electroconvulsive therapy, which is actually an experiment, the machine they are all connected to shuts down and they all end up in some sort of coma where they all appear in the same nightmare for the duration of this coma. A student who is participating in this experiment 
he or she, you don't really know if it is a, a female or a male character, but he or she is actually uh, participating in this experiment, taking notes, looking at these children, and then you see the children obviously in each of their nightmares all together. We are going through different nightmares of these characters because they all have insomnia, they all suffer from nightmares. You see all the different nightmares and all these characters together going through each of their nightmares. And I thought this was super interesting. There were some horror aspects. I don't really read horror novels, but I thought this was quite scary, not gonna lie. And I cannot wait for the second book to come out this coming year. An own voices book with a bisexual main character. I chose Coda by Emma Trevain. It is a very interesting first book in a fantasy series all set around music. It's kind of a dystopia, but the main character was bisexual and so is the author. A book with a main character with an invisible disability. Just by her side by Casey West, the main character gets stuck in a library and she suffers from severe anxiety. So she gets an anxiety attack while being stuck in this library for the weekend with a strange guy. The main character with an anaphylactic allergy. One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. I actually got rid of this book because I didn't really like it. But One of Us is Lying follows five teens who get stuck in the tension and only four of them come out because one of them has died during the tension. One of these characters has an anaphylactic allergy and that's how he died actually, Simon, in the tension. He was allergic to nuts and he ingested something with nuts, but, but he was so allergic to it that he actually died because of it. The whole purpose of this book is finding out who is the culprit and how Simon died during the tension. Because Simon obviously knew that he was allergic to nuts. Main character of colour in SFF. I chose Good Morning Midnight by Lily Brooks Dalton. This is a science fiction novel with a main character of colour. It follows this man who gets stuck on one of the poles and he thinks he's all alone in the world. But then you also get to see this other main character who is female who is on this spaceship but, l but they lose all contact with Earth female has obviously a spaceship crew but all these people think they are the last people on earth and this man the first perspective actually sees a little girl on the pole who, who, who was left behind when all of the people evacuated this man stayed behind and he decides to take care of her and it follows both of these perspectives while they figure out what is going on and why the earth seems suddenly deserted own voices a Latinx main character, The Inexplicable Logic of My Life by Benjamin Ali Ressanz. Benjamin Ali Ressanz is Mexican, so it is own voices. Benjamin Ali Ressanz always writes about Mexican main characters and all of his books are basically own voices. The main character's father is actually also gay and Benjamin Ali Ressanz is also gay, so that is also own voices about this book. The Inexplicable Logic of My Life wasn't as good as Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe, but it still was an amazing book by Benjamin Ali Ressanz, one of my favorite writers of all time. It follows Sal, this main character, throughout his year and him growing up. It's a coming of age story. It is absolutely wonderful. A lot happens in this book. And yeah, I would urge you to read anything basically by this author. Free choice, The Names They Gave Us by Emery Lord. The Names They Gave Us follows this main character who gets sent to this camp for troubled teens as a camp counselor while her mom has, while her mom is battling against cancer. Again, she was in remission before. And throughout the summer, our main character discovers friendships, a lot of people with a lot of problems, and she gets closer to her family. This is my free choice for the diversity bingo because there's a transgender character in here, there's also a lesbian character in here, like there's so much diversity, I cannot deal with it. I think there's also racial diversity in here, but I kind of forgot about that, but I, I, I'm pretty sure there is. The non-Western real world setting. I chose Invisible Planets by Ken Liu. This was a short story collection full of Chinese science fiction and there are obviously some real world locations in here but they are all set in China so that makes it non-western. Then Own Voices book, they both die at the end by Adam Silvera. The aspect of his own voice is about this is that both main characters are gay and Adam Silvera is gay himself. In this book there are two characters who hear they are going to die that day and they find each other through this last friend app and they spend their last day together and fall in love. Then the main character with the wheelchair, I read Me Before You by Jojo Moyes this past year. I really liked it even though I know there are problematic aspects with the diversity element in this because there seems to be some ableism in here. It kind of set, sends out the message that someone who is in a wheelchair doesn't have anything to live for anymore. And I do recognize that problem, 
but I still enjoyed this book very much and it still touched me a lot and so did the movie so I still treasured this book and I still count it for diversity bingo even though the, the representation in this may not be as good I, but I still think it counts for diversity bingo so I did include it in here because I did read a book with someone in a wheelchair in it then the biracial main character, I read Radio Silence by Alice Oseman about a main character who creates a podcast and the other main character who writes art for the podcast and is a huge fan of it and then discovers that her new friend is actually the creator of this podcast. But yeah, the main character is biracial. I kind of forgot what her ancestry was, but she was biracial. And the black main character own voices. I own oh, voices is between brackets so I did not do that for this one but I did choose Silver Star by Michael Grant. Michael Grant is not black but there is a black main character in this book. There are three main characters. One is Jewish, one is white and one is black. So yeah, black main character. The series is book two in the Frontline series. This is a World War II series where it follows three girls who are fighting through World War II and their different experience with this world war being in the military. Then LGBTQIA plus main character of colour. I chose It's Not Like It's a Secret by Misa Sugiura. Actually this is a lesbian romance with I think a Korean American main character and a love interest is Latinx. So it's an interracial romance. Diverse non-fiction Columbine by Dave Cullen. This is a non-fiction about the school shooting at Columbine High School. I count this as diverse because this, it was obvious that the school shooters, there were two, had some mental problems and that makes it diverse. I think both of them suffered from depression. So yeah, mental health. A person of colour on the cover. Queer, there and everywhere. And this book is a collection of 22 people around the world. And it's all about diversity, obviously. All about LGBTQIA plus people around the world in history and now even. And this book is by Sarah Prager. And the last square I fulfilled was Deaf or Hard of Hearing main character. I read The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the fourth and final book in the Raven Cycle series. I will not spoil this character for you, but yeah, there is a hard of hearing person. This character can only hear out of one ear. I counted it as deaf because he's obviously deaf in one ear, even though not completely. So yeah, this is my diversity bingo wrap up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if you've also participated in diversity bingo. Did you read any of the books I talked about? What did you think about them? Are you going to read any of the books I talked about? What did you read for diversity bingo? I would love to know all of the things. Thank you for watching. Goodbye!